All right, let's get to the homework. So factoring and solving quadratics. So first we're going to factor by finding the greatest common factor. Binomial, two terms. There's a number that is common to both, right? Six and nine. It's going to be three. So if I factor out a three, that means I'm dividing everything by that number, which means I can pull that number out front. And so what's left behind? Six divided by three is two X. Nine divided by three is three. And we can't go anywhere else, right? Three is the greatest common factor. Okay, number two. There's no number that goes into nine and five. There's no X. So there is no GCF. Right? There's only one variable, nothing common to nine and five. And there's no such thing as factoring out a one. Like that doesn't make sense. Okay. So five is common to both. There is, so look, there's two X's and then there's one X. So the most X's I can take out is a single X. And also they each have a Y. Okay, so five X Y is what I'm taking out. And five divided by five is one. X squared divided by X is X. Y divided by Y is one. So 10 divided by five is two. And then X and Y go away. All right. Number four. A uh, number that's common to both nine and seven. There is no number. Is there an X that's common to both? Mm, no. And neither is a Y. Now it almost looks like a difference of squares. Right? It almost looks like a difference of squares. But it doesn't because... It doesn't because seven can't be rewritten as something squared. You, we don't know how to do that yet. So, no GCF. Okay, number five. So first we start with the numbers. So I'm gonna take out a three from everything. So a three is gonna be outside. Everything has at least one X, right? So I can take an one X out of everything. And everything has a single Y. So I could take a single Y out of everything. So X and Y. So what's left behind? We have six divided by three, which is two. We have two X's on top, one X on bottom. So a single X. Three Y's on top, one Y on bottom. So Y squared. Minus, this is going to be 3 divided by 3 is 1. There's 3x's on top, 1x on bottom, so x squared. 1y up top, 1y on bottom, so the y's cancel. 21 divided by 3 is 7. And then there's a single x and single y up top. So that's it. Okay, I think that's, that's as far as it can go. 3xy, that's the greatest common factor. Now, number six is a real physics-looking question. 
Uh, all right, so the only thing common to both terms is M. So if we factor out an M, we get one half V squared plus GH. All right, that's that's the most that's the greatest common factor that's common to both terms. Okay, again, the same idea. We need something that is common to all three terms. So we look, first look at the numbers, then we look at each individual variable. So 171, or negative one rather, no number. But there is an x in everything, so a single x can come out. And that's about it, right? Because there's no y in the first term. Even though the last two terms have y's, the first term does not have a y. So we get an x. And then what's left behind? x over x, which is 1, plus 7, xy, right? Two x's on top, one x on bottom. So it cancels, minus y. One x on top, one x on bottom. Greatest common factor is just x. Okay, number 8. Mm, all the numbers are even. I think I can take out a four. Right? I could take out a two, but I could probably take out another two. Because half of eight is four, half of 20 is 10, half of 64, 32. So you could take out another two. So I'm taking out four. Four, I, I believe, is the greatest common coefficient, right? The number what in, in terms of number so a four is coming out um everything has at least one x so i'm taking out an x and everything has at least one y so i'm taking out a single y okay x and y all right what's left behind two a divided by four there's three x's on top one on bottom so x squared there's one y on top, so I'm taking away the y, so no more y's there. 20 divided by 4 is 5. There's two x's on top, x squared, so one x on bottom, so that cancels. So a single x. Two y's on top, one y on bottom, so one cancels. Plus 64 divided by 4. 1, 6, 16. And then 1x on top, 1x on bottom, the x cancels. y squared on top, or y cubed on top, 1y on bottom, so y squared. Okay. That's it. <clears throat> 4xy is the greatest common factor. Okay. Factoring by using... A difference of two squares or perfect square trinomial. Some may not be factorable. All right. So a difference of squares. Let's just talk about that for a second. A difference of squares says that if I have something squared minus something else that's squared, then we have a difference, right? A difference of two squares. And if this is the case, the base, right? A plus B times A minus B. So if you can figure out what A and B are, then you can go straight to this formula. So, so far we have X squared minus 64. So right now, the A is X. Now I just need to rewrite 64 so that it is some number squared. So X squared minus eight squared. Again, X is your A minus 8 squared, which is your B. So this is going to be X plus B. No, I'm sorry. X plus 8 times X minus 8. These are the factors. We'll try that again. We have a, we, we have a lot of examples of this one. 
Okay, 25a squared minus 100. So 25 is really 5 squared a squared minus 100, which is 10 squared. So here, the a, are these two things squared? The b, 10. So we can go straight to the formula, right? So this is going to be 5a plus 10, 5a minus 10. Yeah, so if there's a coefficient in front of the leading term, that, that's okay. Just write it as a square. Okay. Let's see. Uh, X squared minus 216. Is 216 a perfect square? Uh, what is, I feel like, what's 16 times 16? 36, 9, Is that right? 16 times 16 is 456. I feel like it's 256. 36. Oh, yeah, it is because. Haha. <laughs> it is 256. Okay, so it's not. Hmm. 216 is not a perfect square. So. Because right, 16 times 16 is 256. 15 times 15 is 225. 14 times 14. Oh, that might be it. Uh oh, is this it? 404 is 16. Carry the 1. 5. 4. 1. 6. 9. One one ninety six. Oh no, that's not it. All right, not factorable. Cannot factor. All right, two sixteen is not a perfect square. Okay. Here we have, so remember when we talk in terms of A, B, and C, right? It's a trinomial. So the number that's in front of A squared, it's nothing. It's a one, right? Positive 10 is the B. Positive 100 is the C. So we go to our method. A times C, which is 100. We want numbers that, multiples that multiply to make 100. That add up to 10. Hmm. Anything? Anything add up to 10? No. Nope. 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 Okay, so we go through our list and nothing works. Then... That's it. Right, that's it. So, cannot factor. Don't try to force it. All 
All right, number 13. Again, A, B, C. A times C, which is 25. And add up to negative 10. So 1 and 25. Now, when you add them up, we want a negative number. So that means the big number is like 1 and 25. One's the smaller one, 25 is the bigger one. Um, the big number needs the negative symbol. So negative 25. And not only that, but the, the small one needs the negative one symbol also. Because like you're multiplying to make a positive 25. And when you add them together, they got to be negative. So this is going to be... So negative 1 and negative 25. 2, 3, 4, negative 5, and negative 5. So this is how you make a negative 10 by adding them together. So this is going to be... So once you have this, the factors look like j, that's our variable, minus 5, j, minus 5. And then all we're doing is factoring. Okay, good. So j minus 5, j minus 5. 14. Again, a, b, c. So this is 1 times C, which is 36. We want it to add up to 12. So 1 and 36, 2, 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 5, 6 and 6. Okay. So of these pairs, which ones add up to 12? Nope. 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 Six and six. So this is going to be B, B, and then plus six, plus six. Oh, that's crazy how the B's and C's look alike. Okay. That was 14. All right, to the back. So now that was factoring. Right, that was factory. Notice for factoring, our answer is in parentheses and it has each variable, plus or minus. Right, plus or minus each variable. All right, when you're solving, our answers are going to be, um, our answers are going to be the variable equals, right? It's typically going to be two. So, like, these are all X's, so it's going to be X equals a number, X equals, you know, another number. All right. And because it's equal to zero, that's, it has to be equal to zero, right? Everything has to be to one side of the equation, and it has to be equal to zero. So when this is the case, once you're there, you have to start factoring A, B, and C. Now, notice. A is 1, right? A is 1 is a huge deal. Um, when A is 1, the coefficient from the x squared, the math is really nice, right? Because we could, I, I'm using the AC method, A times C. That's what we've been doing th this whole time. So 1 times 20, right? This is 1 times 20, which is 20. And we needed numbers that add up to 9, positive 9. So two numbers that multiply to make 20. 1 and 20. 2 and 10, 3, 4 and 5. So 4 and 5 definitely add up to 9. So this is going to be x plus 4 because positive 4 and x plus 5, positive 5. And it's equal to 0. So these are the factors, right? These are the factors. Um, because a is 1, the numbers 4 and 5 just drop right into the parentheses. Now, what you'll see in the next homework or the next video, A is going to be different from one. And then there's a step that we're adding on right now. Um, two right now. Uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Okay, so these are the factors. And 
to find the roots or the solutions or the x-intercepts, however you want to look at it, the inside lies, right? Inside lies. So what we say, the reason we say that is because the answer is going to be x. Solution is x equals negative 4, right? The opposite of what's inside the factor. And then x is equal to negative 5. Again, opposite of what's in the factor. And this is because two things are being multiplied. And they equal 0. So one of them must be 0. So we have to figure out what are those two cases that makes each of these 0. Right? If I plug in negative 4 here, this whole term becomes 0, and 0 times anything is 0. Likewise, if I plug in negative 5 here, then the right term becomes 0, and 0 times anything is 0. Well, let's say you don't see that right away. Well, then you just set each of these equal to 0. And minus 4. So x is equal to negative 4. Minus 5. x is equal to minus 5. So instead of doing this every time, right? Because this does take time and we're trying to be efficient, right? We're trying to be like, we're trying to get the correct answer, but we're trying to get it as fast as possible. So we just say that the inside lies, right? And then you skip, you skip all of the math because we know that it's going to work out every time, right? Like it's a pattern that we've caught on to years ago. So let's try it again. Um, A is one. I get in the habit of just writing this every time. A times 28, so 28 adds up to negative 11. So we multiply two numbers, but they got to add up to a negative number. That means both numbers need to be negative. All right, 1 and 28. 2 and 14. So as you're doing these, try to keep negative 11 in the back of your mind. Uh, 3, 4, negative 4, negative 7. There it is. This makes 11. This means x minus 4, x minus 7 equals 0. Now, we don't need to set each of them equal to 0, right? Because we can just take the opposite. And we say that x is equal to positive 4. This is a root. x is equal to, neg to positive seven right it's the opposite okay seventeen mm, all right draw our puzzle our x puzzle as we call it so one times negative thirty six is negative thirty six we want this to add up to five so notice we're multiplying two numbers and it's going to make a negative. So one of them must be negative, but which one? So let's watch. 1 times 36 is definitely 36, but we want it to be negative 36. So one of these has to be negative. So you have to look at the symbol that's on the B value. And this tells you that the small one, right? The big number, 36, will always get the sign of the B value, right? Because now negative one plus 36 gives me a positive 35. So that's not it. Negative two, 18, negative three, 12, negative four and nine, negative six and six. Okay. So of this, the ones that make Positive 5 is negative 4 and 9. So A minus 4, A plus 9 equals 0. So the roots, solutions, intercepts are X equals positive 4, or not X, A, A equals negative 9. Those are the two solutions. All right, 18. So here, it's not equal to zero. It's equal to negative six. So we're going to move everything to one side. 
I'm going to add six to both sides. So this is going to be x squared plus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. So notice we could subtract the x squared over, subtract the 5x over, um, and then have it that way, which would work. Uh, me personally, I like leaving x squared positive. Right, I just like having x squared positive. Um, we'll leave it at that. So, getting our puzzle, right, A, B, C. So, A times C, which is 1 times 6, so 6, adds up to the B value. So, multiples of 6. 1 and 6, 2 and 3. So, which one of these adds up to a positive 5? Two and three. So x plus two, x plus three equals zero. Now the roots are going to be the opposite. x equals negative two, x equals negative three. It's kind of wild. 19. X squared minus 5x equals 14. Again, we want it equal to 0. So I have to subtract 14 from both sides. This is going to be x squared minus 5x minus 14 equals 0. Okay. A, B, C. So 1 times c is negative 14. The b value is negative 5. So I want to multiply to make negative 14. So 1 and 14. But one of them needs to be negative. So the big one gets the sign that's up here. So the big one, 14, right? So when you add these together, you get negative 13. So 2 and, and negative 7. And that makes negative 5. This is going to be x plus 2, x minus 7 equals 0. And we do the opposite. x is equal to negative 2, x is equal to 7. Got three more. We're almost done. All right, first thing I'm going to do for number 20 is subtract 80 from both sides. So this is x squared minus 2x minus 80 equals 0. Okay. We're looking for numbers that multiply to make negative 80. That add up to negative 2. So they've got to be fairly close together. So this is going to be 1 and 80. Remember, it's negative 80. It needs to add up to a negative number. So one of them has to be negative, so the big one gets the symbol. 2 and negative 40. 3, 4, negative 20. 5. Negative 16, getting closer. Uh, six, is six going? Nope. Seven, eight. Eight and negative 10. So this is how we make negative two. So X plus eight, X minus 10 equals zero. So this is going to be x is equal to negative eight, x is equal to positive 10, right? It's the opposite. Okay. 21. Again, I'm moving everything to the left. Plus 6x 
plus 6x. So x squared plus 6x minus 27 is equal to 0. Building my x, negative 27, positive 6. So this is going to be, so you can go straight there. This is going to be 9 and 3. And one of them has to be negative. So the big number is going to get the sign of the B sign. So negative 3. So 9 minus 3. That makes positive 6. And multiplies by negative 27. So x plus 9. x minus 3. Equals 0. So this is x is equal to opposite, right? Negative 9. x is equal to positive 3. Okay, last one. Minus 8x. Minus 8x. x squared minus 8x plus 15 equals 0. 